Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Welcome back to Gone Riding, where I ride motorcycles and talk about stuff. Today, I'm going to give you a detailed walk around of my 2018 KLR650. I'll go over the specs for this bike while I find a spot to pull over, and then I'll show you the bike and the mods I have installed. So this bike was produced from 1987 to 2018, with a redesign in 2008. It was discontinued in 2018 because of some global emission standard stuff, but Kawasaki just announced a redesigned bike coming out in 2020 with fuel injection. So that should solve those emissions issues. Uh, it looks pretty good. If I didn't have a bike, I'd probably go for it. But they didn't really change enough for me to ditch my current bike for it. Now my KLR 650, so it's a 651cc single cylinder engine with liquid cooling and a carburetor. It's got a 5 speed transmission with a chain drive. Really geared as a 50-50 machine. It doesn't really excel on or off road, but it does just fine on either. Uh, I often find myself looking for 6 gear when I'm getting on the highway, and it's just not there. It's rolling on a 90-90-21 front tire and a 130-80-17 rear tire. Uh, the rear's kind of a funky size. The 17-inch rim isn't quite as big as a dirt bike, but larger than street bikes. It limits the tire selection a little bit, but it's not too bad. The 21-inch front tire really makes up for it off-road, though. The seat height is 35 inches with about 8.5 inches of ground clearance. Now, on a good day, I have a 30-inch inseam, so I did lower mine about an inch so I could back up into a parking spot without getting off the bike. Uh, but that's just me, you know, it's, it's all personal preference at that point. But that's about it for the specs. Uh, I just need to find a spot to stop up here, and I think I know just the place. There she is, the mighty KLR. It sound right, boy. Isn't she a beaut? We'll start at the back and work our way forward. So one of the first things I did on this bike was get rid of that lower rear fender. It uh, hung down to about there, looked terrible. Caught all the high grass and all that stuff. So I got rid of that, really cleaned up the look. Uh, next up, I have Tusk pannier racks. I think about half this bike is Tusk at this point. And with those, I bought the medium Tusk aluminum panniers. I mainly use them more on-road touring or commuting. I don't like to take them off-road. You just have that higher possibility of crushing your leg and getting pinned between them. My top box is a Harbor Freight Apache 3800 case. It's kind of a Pelican case knockoff, but the thing's pretty tough. I crash with it all the time. Uh, it's got a little couple scrapes here and there, but it's held together pretty good. So in here I keep my tool roll, uh, my disc lock alarm. So I got some GoPro batteries there. My slime tire pump. 12 volt. I always keep a couple masks in the bike just in case I forget mine during this pandemic. Baby wipes, those things are invaluable when you're out riding off road. I keep a couple bungee cords right here. I always keep some 1100 paracord on the bike in case I have to tow another bike out off road or tie something up in camp. It's always a good idea to have a good length of rope on hand. I picked up this tube type tire sealant. I uh, don't know if it works. It's probably garbage. Uh, I hope to not have to try it out, but I keep a tube patch kit in my tool roll. I always keep a mosquito head net in here too. It packs down real small and that thing is a lifesaver. 
So last but not least, recently I installed this dual USB charger. I installed it to charge my GoPro batteries while I'm riding. I just have it pigtailed so I can plug it into my trickle charger port when I want to use it. But I can disconnect it when I don't so it doesn't accidentally switch on and drain my battery. I also keep my documents up in the top of the box. It keeps them drying out of the elements right here. I installed a three inch PVC tube that I mounted to the back of my pannier rack. I initially used it as a tool tube, but as my tool kit grew, they didn't fit. So I just use it for my tent poles now. Makes it real easy to stuff the tent down in my panniers or soft bags. Uh, I'm currently running the Motaz Tractionator Adventure Tires. I have about 10,000 miles on these. They're getting about ready to get changed. But they've been great tires. Real happy with them. Up front I have Tusk Crash Bars. Those things are worth their weight in gold. My bike would probably be in pieces without them. I have a few scrapes on them from a crash that happened to me a couple years ago. I got a pretty good story about that. It's in my intro video if you want to watch it. Um, this sticker on the other side gives you a little bit of insight into that. My grips are the Oxford heated grips. I didn't ever think I would use heated grips. It was never really anything that came to mind, but my buddy got them for me for my birthday. I ride year round, so I don't know if I'd ever have a road bike without them at this point. I'm running the Ram X grip for my phone mount. Holds tight, thing works great. Uh, my handguards are Tusk D Flex Pro handguards. Haven't had an issue with them. They sure have taken a beating too and still strong as ever. I replaced the stock windscreen with the zero gravity double bubble windscreen. I'm 5'8 and it helped keep the wind from hitting me right in the chin to flowing right over my helmet. If you're any taller than that you may need a riser or a different windscreen but it works pretty well and doesn't stick up too high for riding off road. So I installed some auxiliary lights down here, They're dual 6 LED lights I have tied into my high beams. I replaced the headlights and taillights with LEDs, the stock lights just weren't doing it for me. And I installed a flasher module for the taillight uh, so it flashes a couple times then goes solid when you hit the brakes. A lot more visible, uh, I like it. I almost forgot. I have a Enduro Engineering skid plate. Thing is solid as a rock. Works with the Tusk crash bars too. Doesn't get in the way. And in addition to the Tusk low profile magnetic drain plug for the oil. I don't have to worry about any damage from the bottom of the bike. One of my custom additions to this bike is this lower dash that I 3D printed. Uh, you can buy them made out of steel but I decided to 3D print it. I have an illuminated switch, a voltage meter, 12 volt outlet, and a dual USB outlet. Well, I think that about sums up the tour of the custom Cow Slayer KLR. Thanks for joining me. And you know what I always say, if you're not on two wheels, you're probably on four. And that's not nearly as cool.